we're here at Connect House on Willow Lane in Mitcham, an industrial estate that houses 84 homeless families from four boroughs, Merton, Croydon, Sutton and Bromley. The purpose of this video is to show you just how people and children are living. I've been here since April. They told me I'd be here a month. Yeah. I have malnutrition and um, I need to try and gain weight. And I told them that I couldn't survive without an oven. And I couldn't survive with sharing a bed with my 10 year old daughter. Um, it's dangerous. You've got a sink that's right next to electrics. I can't separate it. I have to get my daughter, if I'm walking across the room, I have to get my daughter to move to the side. We've been there since September uh, 2016, last year. This is where four, uh, three people sleeping, and new, an, another new baby is arriving now, making four people. My wife, an eight years old girl and five years old girl, sleeping in the same bed together. And you can see the world everywhere is stamped. You can see everywhere now, stamped. The, even the new baby that just arrived now, there's no place where we can put a cot. Because every, there's, there's, see, there's load everywhere. They will just pack everything together, the same as in the kitchen and the other room. Everybody living in this block has been accepted as homeless by the council, a council. That means that they have children or they're expecting children. All the councils say they will house these families. Their problem is they can't do it at the moment. So they end up temporarily in a converted warehouse in the middle of an industrial estate. This is Connect House just in here and obviously it's a skip place along with many other industrial sites and the smell, it smells strong sewage and yeah, not great. So we have to deal with this every day, it comes in the rooms. And T was coughing, coughing, coughing and we kept taking him to doctors and they said, you know, he hasn't got a chest infection and he was wheezing, kept taking him back. And in the end they said it must be something he's breathing in, which then kind of alerted us to there is a skip site that runs all night. You hear emptying the skips, all the brick dust and everything. I emailed the council straight away and then we, it wasn't very long was it, before they moved you into room, yeah. another room. Very quickly his wheeziness slowed down and stopped, but it was a big thing. I actually wrote, has anyone actually tested the air? I can't go outside because I'm cooking here. She's sleeping here. Uh, in front here, I can't even open the window, smelling from outside rubbish. This is the whole estate, obviously. They're used to it as an industrial estate. So it comes through, they come through, you know, and the trucks come round and taking children to school. And it's dangerous. Someone's going to get hurt soon. There's no play areas, there's no, there's nowhere for the children to play. The children play in the car park. Um, I have to dust every day. Um, there's a thick layer of black dust over everything and we're breathing that in. I'm a plumber and heating engineer by trade. And, you know, some of the building works that have gone on are dangerous. Actually, my toilet was blocked and it, all you could smell was faeces for about it was about a month. I asked them to fix it. They come up and fixed it two or three times and they still hadn't rectified it. In the end, I had to do it myself. And I call the care line and there's nobody there and they keep you hanging on. And the caretaker is no longer here, but they don't want the residents to know that. So they told me to keep quiet about that. I was um, 27 weeks pregnant, roughly, and I called the ambulance, I was at home. And um, there's two, um, there's two postcodes to this um, address that we're living at and um, they took the wrong one. So they went to the front, the main office, and um, they told me to come down the stairs and I, the baby was already coming out. So I had to go down the stairs to meet them because they didn't know where to find me. And then I had to push the baby out in the car park. So we went to St. Helens Hospital and then the baby, my baby died. There was a man, I could hear him upstairs and I don't know what on earth he was saying. He sounded quite drunk, literally screaming, shouting abuse. My children have to listen to that. Someone could just break down the door. I don't feel safe there. I close my eyes because every day I cry, I cry. I can't accept my baby. She's disability, I don't know what's wrong. But I'm very sad about the accommodation. I don't know, I can't explain. The question is, how long is temporary? I'm personally aware of people who've lived in this block 
almost two years. I've travelled the world and I've been to some of the like the poorest countries in the world. I've you know I've walked around in favelas in Brazil, and oh yeah, yeah. I they are happier than the people here. I would rather be poor in a poor country than poor in this country.